What's up guys, back again to do a, another video here in the off season for the Broncos. Just wanted to kind of finish my thoughts on what the Broncos did in free agency and kind of give my opinion on what they did at the running back position. Obviously, we rescinded our restricted free agency tender on Philip Lindsay, let him go, uh, mutually agreed to part ways with him. He, he uh, ended up becoming an unrestricted free agent and re-signing with the Houston Texans. So, you know, congratulations to Philip on that. And uh, I hope Texans fans are excited about getting Philip Lindsay. You're getting a great player, but you get, you're also getting a great guy. And uh, as a Broncos fan, it's, you know, it's definitely a little bit emotional losing Philip because he really does represent, you know, uh, Denver and, and represent this community and represent this state. Being a, a Colorado native, he's from Aurora. You know, I'm from Denver as well, so Philip really embodied kind of that hometown kid, if you will, uh, on the Broncos. And he was very productive for us. You know, 534 carries, 2,550 yards, uh, 17 rushing touchdowns uh, during his time as a Bronco, averaged 4.8 yards per carry, also had 77 catches, 465 yards, and one receiving touchdown. Only had one receiving touchdown during his time uh, here in Denver, which to me is is kind of a example of how the Broncos underutilized him, uh, you know, and, and, and really never utilized him in the right way, at least in my opinion. And I think that's kind of part of the reason why we agreed to mutually part ways with Philip Lindsay and, and let him walk in free agency and ultimately sign with Houston is, again, because we weren't really utilizing him and weren't utilizing him as effectively as, you know, he can be used. And, and to me, that's as a change of, of pace back, but also in the past game. I mean, you, you look at uh, what he did last season, only seven catches for, for 28 yards in 2020. Um, that's, you know, not highlighting what Philip Lindsay does best, in my opinion. Um, again, and that's getting him out in open space and, and getting him on screens, getting him on check downs, um, even getting him out in the middle of the field. Uh, again, I think this this is a guy and a player who we just constantly underutilized uh, as a receiver out of the backfield. And, and he did a great job of, of, of running in between the tackles and, and being a power back for us at times and even getting to the edge and showcasing his speed. Um, but, you know, once we got Melvin Gordon, it's like we just kind of put Philip Lindsay on the back burner. And I thought that was um, really disappointing to see. I mean, this is a guy that rushed for over a thousand yards. Um, you know, it was a, a undrafted free agent out of Colorado. Again, just kind of embodied the hometown kid here in Denver, and uh, I'm gonna miss him. And it it does, um, you know, kind of suck to see him go, and it, it's a little sad and disappointing to see him go. But we weren't utilizing him, as I said, um, as effectively as I think he can be. And and I think in in Houston, he'll get a chance to be a, a player, especially in the passing game. Um, that he really never got a chance to be here in Denver. Now, on the flip side of this, losing Philip Lindsay kind of leaves a hole at the running back position for us, and and we were able to fill that hole by bringing in uh, Mike Boone from Minnesota, which makes a lot of sense with him being uh, in Minnesota with George Payton, obviously, with his time as the assistant GM there. Uh, we signed Mike Boone to a two-year uh, deal. I think is worth $3.87 million, $2.6 million guaranteed uh, with a $1.6 million signing bonus. Uh, so, you know, really good to have Mike Boone here. And with Philip Lindsay being gone, he's going to get a chance, I think, to really compete with Royce Freeman for that backup running back position and, and get a chance and get some real time and, uh, you know, real, real carries here. Uh, on our offense, you know, and it is a guy that's still young and could flourish, you know, only 25 years old, he'll be 26 in June, uh, 5'11", 206 pounds, uh, signed with Minnesota as an undrafted free agent, so kind of has that similarity uh, with Philip Lindsay, and again, uh, has that connection to George Payton there uh, with with their time in Minnesota, um, and really in Minnesota, has just kind of been stuck in that, that you know, running back room uh, behind Dalvin Cook and Alexander Madison, who are just two really talented running backs, and and now kind of getting out of Minnesota and in Denver, I think again he's going to have a chance to see real meaningful snaps for for maybe the first time in his career. I mean, this is a guy that's only played 149 offensive snaps in his career uh, and during his three seasons with the Vikings. Um, his best season came in 2019, where he played all 16 games. Uh, he had two starts actually in that season as well. Uh, had 49 carries, 273 yards. Uh, average Five, uh, 5.6 yards per carry, uh, had nine uh, rushing first downs, three rushing touchdowns, also had three catches for 17 yards, um, and 180 of his 273 rushing yards came after contact. I mean, this is a guy that I think people uh, believe is going to come in here and be a change of pace back for us, and I think he can be. I think he's really going to be a very capable receiver out of the backfield, but Mike Boone is a very physical 
down the hill runner. And this is a guy, again, evident by that season, his best season, 180 of his 273 yards coming after contact. This is a guy that, that really is kind of a bruiser of a runner um, and has that kind of bruising physical downhill running style. So I'm really excited to see him uh, utilize that here in Denver and have that in combination with Melvin Gordon and Royce Freeman in the backfield now. And this is a guy who has great ball security over his career, zero fumbles in 40 career games. And the great thing about Mike Boone is he's a guy that you bring in and he adds value in the special teams. He has played 482 snaps on special teams throughout his career during his time in Minnesota. I think also we'll have added value as a returner for us. I believe he did take some kick returns for the Vikings during his time with them. So I definitely think that's a position he could uh, also see here uh, in Denver. And, and again, that's another place he can, can play meaningful snaps. So I think Mike Boone with Philip Lindsay going is, is a pretty meaningful signing for the Broncos, even though it might have went under the radar and a lot of people aren't excited about it. I think he really is going to uh, have a, a chance to compete with Royce Freeman for that backup position. Um, and this is a guy I think could come in and see, you know, 12 to 15 carries a game for us. Um, you know, if Melvin Gordon gets hurt, this is a guy that could easily be your starting running back uh, this season for the Denver Broncos. So I'm excited to have Mike Boone here. Uh, he has fresh legs, again, playing behind Cook and, and Madison for so long. Um, and it is just a bruising physical runner and having that that style with Melvin Gordon. We're able, we're going to be able to, I think, wear on teams. Um, and then he's got added value on special teams. And I, I would be excited to see him maybe even compete for that, uh, you know, starting kick return uh, job. So uh, kick returner job, I should say. So uh, really excited to have Mike Boone here. Um, and, and again, I think he, he definitely fills the void that, that Philip Lindsay leaves behind. I will say, though, it'll be interesting to see if the Broncos do draft a running back. I easily could see us being in play for Najee Harris. Maybe, you know, if, if we're not able to get one of these quarterbacks we don't want, we trade back in the first round um, and, and take Najee Harris. I easily could see us being the team that does that. Um, so I think that's still an option, and especially with signing Mike Boone. I definitely think that's an option that George Payton has left on the table. But nonetheless, Mike Boone does fill that void at the backup running back position. Again, I'm, I'm really excited to see what Mike Boone can do uh, in a, a bigger role here in Denver than he had previously in Minnesota. All right, guys, now looking at some of the players we re-signed. Uh, George Payton, I think, did a great job of bringing back some some big pieces and some big talent, especially on the defensive side of the football for the Broncos. And you got to start with what he did with Von Miller, picking up the team option on Von Miller's contract for next season, $17.5 million uh, for 2021. The team option was for the uh, guaranteed $7 million of that contract next season. So Von Miller does return as a Denver Bronco. And, and this was a big thing to watch going into the offseason. It was if the Broncos were going to you know, let Von Miller go and let him walk into free agency, uh, you know, after kind of the, the, the year that he had with uh, the injury he suffered, uh, you know, d dislocating that peroneal tendon in his left ankle, uh, you know, which, which kept him out all season and then had the domestic violence thing, I think, in Parker um, with, with his, I think, former fiance or girlfriend. I, I don't really know the situation all that well, but you know, th there was, there was a lot of things that were pointing to Von Miller's exit and Denver being pretty imminent and, and being the move to make. And um, honestly, you know, I, I've, I've kind of said, I think the Broncos, and, and I, I put this blame on J John Elway, um, but I think the Broncos, if they were going to move past Von Miller, they kind of missed their chance on getting rid of him, you know, I think probably two to three years ago is when they should have pulled the trigger on that move if they wanted to make it, uh, because I think that's when his value was still really high. After the injury, after some of the off the, the field issues, um, with his contract and, and, and the money that's remaining on it. Um, I'm not sure what kind of value you could have got for him in the trade market. So I think bringing him back um, and, and giving him kind of a, a, a prove-it deal, if you will, or having a prove-it year, so to say, um, I think is great. And Von, you know, released a statement after the news came out that we, we were picking up the option on his contract about how he wanted to be a, you know, a Coloradan for life and, um, you know, talked about how much it means to him to be a Bronco and, and come back this season. So, you know, if if Vaughn really genuinely feels that way, which I think he does, you know, maybe he comes back and is healthy and, and has a really good year and really does a, a great job of, of maybe returning somewhat to the Vaughn Miller we're used to seeing. And, and maybe we can work out a very uh, manageable, uh, you know, agreeable deal for both sides after this, this season. But, you know, nonetheless, bringing Vaughn Miller back is 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 a big deal. But uh, it is it, it is a little worrisome. I mean, you are talking about a guy that just turned 32 years old. He is once again coming off the 
dislocated peroneal tendon in his left ankle, which, you know, kept him out of all of last year. And for a guy that, that bends and relies on ankle flexibility so much like Von Miller to turn around that corner, that's definitely, you know, a little bit worrisome. And he's had some other injuries and durability issues throughout his career in the past. Um, you know, I believe he's torn his ACL as well. Um, but the great thing about Vaughn is, again, you bring back the f- franchise leader in sacks. You're talking about a guy, 106 sacks throughout his career with the Bronco, the Super Bowl 50 MVP. Um, and, and that in and of itself is exciting because of what Vaughn Miller means to the Broncos and the franchise's history and what he's done during his time, regardless of, again, the off-the-field issues and the injury issues. Um, and reuniting him with Bradley Chubb is a big deal. I mean, these is, these are two guys that really haven't had a chance, I think, to really fully shine together. They have only played together in 20 career games. That, that's that's pretty disappointing to think about. Uh, but in those 20 career games, they've combined for 29 and a half sacks. So you're bringing that back. Um, and last season, as, as abysmal as our season was, and as much holes as our defense had, our pass rush was one of the, I think, the bright spots. Look at the Broncos last year. We were ninth in sacks. We had 42 sacks. We were tied uh, for sixth in quarterback pressures with 167. We were seventh in quarterback pressure percentage uh, with 26.2%. 13th in quarterback hits at 93. Um, and now you're going to add Von Miller back to that group, uh, which again returns Malik Reed, who had eight sacks, Bradley Chubb, seven and a half sacks, uh, and Dr- uh, Draymond Jones, who had six and a half sacks. You, you got all three of those guys coming back who all had 50% of the team's uh, 42 sacks uh, last year. They had 21 of the 42 combined sacks. And you're also bringing back Shelby Harris into that group. Maybe you draft another pass rusher. Um, your, your, your pass rush and your front seven just got a whole lot scarier bringing Bon Miller back. You know, maybe he can't return to form of a 15 plus sack guy but even if he comes back and you know can get you eight to 12 sacks adding another pass rusher of 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 that ability to this group that you already have that's that's pretty scary and and von miller alone the attention he's going to draw from offenses and offensive lines uh, i think i think it's huge to add him back so um it's great to have him back again the price tag you can argue the durability concerns you can argue the off the field concerns you can argue the age being 32 now you can argue i'm i'm totally with you on all those things and again i think the the broncos if they were trying to move past von miller they should have done it two to three years ago uh, but nonetheless we have von back we have him back at the 17 and a half million dollar price tag and you bring him back again to a team last year that was ninth in sacks so that excites me and especially if you maybe add a, a pass rusher or some pass rushers maybe in the draft um, that's only going to enhance your front seven and this group going forward. So, uh, you know, bringing back the franchise leader in sacks is is not something I'm going to uh, be too upset about. And again, I'm, I'm excited to see Vaughn back and hopefully he's he's focused, um, you know, rededicated and, and, and can get healthy first and foremost and get back on the field.